Your favorite aspect of the sport? Being able to travel and think. Treasure Coast Sports Commission, great partners. If you have anything going on, please reach out to those guys. Rick, Ryan, Zach, they're great people to work with. And their facilities, I can't say enough about the people at their facilities and just the help that they provide in making sure your event is very successful. Today we have... Artists need the energy of a city. There are no signs, there are no stickers, uh, no blinking lights. Uh, you gotta, you, in order to find this studio, you need to have an appointment. It's not open to the public. An artist is always looking for inspiration, invention, uh, a, a, a new way, a cutting edge, uh, a way to express themselves um, in an iconic way. You have the inspiration of Picasso, but you have the inventiveness of trying to twist things around and make them new. After you've been painting uh, for 10 years, 20 years or more, you don't have any time for inspiration any longer. You gotta be able to, when you get the time, sit down and get going. You're no longer concerned with developing your style or what kind of a, uh, a circumstance you wanna get involved with, because you've done all that. The main thing is get in there and get the work done and enjoy it. Nice work if you can get it. Da 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 da. The idea of being a critic and a curator and an artist, I think, strengthens all of the perceptions that you have, and allows you to, um, I think, become a little more articulate about examining others' works. And if you're an artist, your thoughts and vision is expanded by examining other works of art. That's why I love being a critic. And I love being able to be a writer for the Huffington Post or simply the best because it helps me get a perspective. The idea that you can take a piece of paper, you can cut it up, rearrange it, and also add a three-dimensional quality with certain devices that an artist uses. It just has, it, it, it calls me, I guess. And any artist worth his salt who continues in one direction needs to be called every day by what they do and stimulate it. it. Whether it's a landscape painter that feels he needs to get out into the woods and set up an easel, he's called for that. Or a street artist that needs to find a, a blank wall. Uh, for me, it's a blank canvas. And I'm very excited about that. Art I'm Jeff Vogel for Art Buzz TV. J. Stephen Manolis is an artist, but more than that, you are an innovator bringing people together. I've had a lifelong goal as it relates to uh, being in the art business, to not only do it as an artist in the solo realm, but to reconstruct a 19th century salon concept in a modern way uh, here uh, at Manolis Projects. Mm -hmm. And we have accumulated a great deal of success that is going to result in Manolis Project Salon being fully formed and launched for Art Basel Miami this year. Yep. And we're going to have our launch party on December 3, uh, 2016. It might be the only modern salon on the entire East Coast of the United States. And there's a long history of salons in art. We have uh, two painters. We have uh, two sculptors. We have four photographers and we have a consolidation of artists that do jewelry as art. I have a goal that Manolis Projects will develop a reputation that when you buy the works of art here, they hold an increase in value. So it's not a consumption item, it's a collectible item. The first dimension of all my works is beauty. But I never paint without a strong message. I'm Jeff Vogel for Art Buzz TV. There is a great exhibition that's opening up in Coral Springs, and I learned about this from Bruce Helander. J. Stephen Manolis, you are the artist extraordinaire that Bruce Helander is curating this exhibit for. I uh, have the incredible honor <laughs> of uh, being a solo exhibitionist at the extraordinary Coral Springs Museum of Art from December 3rd through February 28th. 
There will be upwards of 100 works. It's being reviewed as a survey of my works, mm -hmm. past and for the first two years of being a public artist. I think it's going to be a show that highlights my emphasis on color, my painting in series, and the communication messages that associate with every one of my series. So I think it's an iterative key to understanding my work, to know what the message is. And Bruce Elander, who's curating the show, has promised that we're going to put in writing in a museum context on the walls next to each of the different oh, series what the meanings of these series of paintings are. The museum exhibition is free. It has a soft opening Saturday, December 3rd, the formal opening on Thursday night, December 8th. There'll be comments by the museum director, Bruce Helander, and myself, and I'm so honored. There is a lot going on in Miami this season, and one big event that's happening involves Miami artist J. Stephen Manolis, and you're going to be receiving a special award from Books and Books this year, aren't you? Well, Jeff, yes, I am. I am uh, debuting my book, Key West Changing Colors, mm -hmm. at Books and Books on Friday night, December 2nd, and in conjunction with that book launch, I have the incredible honor of being given the first annual Art Basel Miami Books and Books Artist of the Year Award. I can't tell you how incredible that makes me feel and what an honor it is. The book is 112 pages and it's got 47 watercolors in them uh, representing three different uh, areas of color and changing color that I experienced in Key West. One is water, one is flamingos, and one is what Key West is most famous for, is sunsets. And that book is going to be launched on Friday, December 2nd. It'll be from 6 o'clock until 8 o'clock, Friday night, at the headquarters of Books and Books, which, by the way, has won the Bookstore of the Year Award for the last three years in the United States. Uh, Mitch Kaplan and his staff and event manager Stephanie Fernandez are going all out to make this into an extraordinary event, and we're going to do our part. This is going to be the go-to event of Art Basel. My art is my greatest passion. I started out by trying to paint like Monet and Van Gogh, so those were my go-to artists. Now, at what age did you do this? This was at about 10 years okay. old. It's an ambitious 10-year-old. <laughs> Absolutely. But I love the abstract expressionist mm. style of painting, and I tried to develop that over many years. I started with a more geometric, tapestry-like focus on artwork, which I think represented my kind of arithmetic, logical mind, uh -huh. which as I developed my art, it became much more fluid. Much of it is spontaneous, so I might start with a few colors and a concept, uh, but each painting really does take you on a journey. Jill Krudick is one of the artists who is exhibiting at Manolis Projects. Why should people come to the opening of the Salon exhibit? You are going to see the most spectacular work in a phenomenal setting, and everyone is so excited to be launching this amazing project. It's a very unique opportunity for artists who are working with Stephen in Manolis Projects. He's bringing lots of different disciplines together, which makes it a much more unique destination style salon gallery. And having worked with Stephen directly, it's been a phenomenal eye-opening experience. I am debuting my book, Key West Changing Colors, my first travelogue book, in which I go to the very special places in which I think light, color, art history, and the overall personality of a place is very special. And to me, Key West is one of those. Yeah. I chose three different subject matters to paint. One is water. In approximately 15 different water watercolors, I tried to show all the different possible color variations that I experienced as an artist. It's a color show every day. Yeah. It's unbelievable how many blue colors. The second subject matter I adopted is flamingos, mm -hmm. which in 1832, when Audubon went to Key West, was pink. 175 years later, because of water contamination and diet, 
has changed to orange. So abstractly, I did a whole group of paintings, both watercolors and on canvas, that start with pink at the top, transition to orange at the bottom, they move left. You can get aggressive, you can score goals, you can be number one. And I learned from playing other teams that every team plays differently. Like some teams might have better defense, offense. What areas do you need to work on? Offense, the yeah. play it's at. We're going to play a little bit of a harder team, hopefully get the W again. And I think we'll finish close to first. How does the Treasure Coast Sports Commission and others help you in organizing an event like this? It's, they're a huge uh, support group for us when we come into our community. They help us get our athletes in great hotels. They help us find our wonderful venues and, our, and great sponsors and partners to help us uh, put on the best c competition for each one of these athletes. This is a beautiful day today, isn't it? Couldn't have asked for a better yeah. day to play some lacrosse. Yeah. I'm Jeff Vogel for Art Buzz TV. Lisa Lindhart is a goldsmith about to exhibit at Manolo's Project Salon exhibition. I'm very excited. I'm here from New York and I spent some time also in Miami studying at Jewelry Creations Workshop. So we have a great little collaboration going on there and I'm happy to be here from New York City. What makes a good gold? That includes platinum, gold, um, anything from 24 karat to 18 karat gold. Also work with different alloys of gold. We mix our own golds and have a custom color called champagne gold, which you'll see in the show. Uh, sterling silver as well, only precious materials, and then of course, precious and semi-precious stones. What makes you excited about being involved with uh, Magnolus Project's studio gallery? Talent. There's some incredible talent here in this gallery, um, and of course the artisans that we're exhibiting with. It's just an honor to be around such tremendous talent and community. Um, such a wonderful community of artisans down here, and excitement. I think that there's a really great exciting buzz in Miami with the art scene right now. Of course sunshine too. <laughs> you gotta love the Miami sunshine as well. We are looking forward to a very uh, packed schedule um, in uh, the Miami area. Of course, uh, Miami becomes the most famous art community in the world for at least a week mm -hmm. during Art Basel Week. I am also working at the same time, and I have been now for a year, curating uh, this really remarkable survey show uh, by uh, J. Stephen Manolis, which will be at the Coral Springs